How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly favored. Praise God. This is the night the Lord has made. We will rejoice because we have a, a choice to rejoice. Isn't that wonderful? You have a choice. So you have a choice to be joyful. You have a choice to be miserable. You have a choice. Of course, there's that powerful law that whatever a man sows, he shall reap. reap. I shall reap what I sow. And nobody gets away with it. Amen? Amen? In John 14, would you go there with me? John 14. Glory, glory, and glory. Hallelujah. Starting at verse 1, John 14. Let not your heart be what? <clears throat> Troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself as long as you stay in the place that I prepared for you here in this realm. Hello. That's called spiritual positioning. Does everybody understand that? That's why, again, I want to share about the importance of being spiritually positioned. Because unless we stay spiritually positioned... We miss. It's like missing a bus. It's like missing a ride. It's like missing things. That's why many people miss the things God is trying to get them because the enemy gets them out of position. And Jesus, I mean, Jesus emphasizes tremendously. He said, I'm preparing a place for you. Well, if he's prepared a place for you eternally, he's prepared a place for you temporarily. He said, because there, uh, I, I, you know, I, I will come again and receive you to myself. And there, where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. In verse 5, and Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I want you to grab hold of something. The way to life is what? The truth. The way to life is the truth. So that we must become truth seekers. The moment you stop seeking truth, you begin to drift. Is everybody with me? Let's go a little further. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him because you've seen him. Of course, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it will be sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Again, Jesus said, I prepare a place for you here eternally, and there is a place prepared for you temporarily. Make sure you stay in position. One of the things he's saying, which is vitally important in this, because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way to life is truth. Amen? So as we become true seekers, we don't... Remember, the enemy is always going to prevent us from seeking truth. When he prevents me and you from seeking truth, a disconnect comes. So we are never to seek emotion. Never seek how you feel. Even though it comes to you. 
We do not seek emotion. We don't seek feelings. Or we don't seek the things of the flesh that promote deception. We don't seek them. We always seek truth. And anything that the enemy tries to come will try to divide, prolong, interfere, or separate you from becoming and maintaining a truth seeker. Is everybody okay? John 8. Let's speak it together. John 8, 31. And Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. So if they believed him, were they seeking to follow him? Yes. If you abide in my word, is his word truth? You are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Wow. They answered him and said, we are Abraham's descendants. They have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will make us free? Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever. But a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my truth, my word, has no place in you. Why? You stop seeking truth. Does everybody get it? Jesus rebuked them because they stopped seeking truth, and the truth was standing right before him. And they even read about him in the word, in the Old Covenant, in the Torah. He said, I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. Whoo, snap. And they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, if Abraham were your father, if, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornications. We have one father, God. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. Why? Because Jesus is what? The truth. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my Word or my truth. See, they were actually disconnected, weren't they? You are of your father the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. The moment you stop seeking truth, you don't stand in truth. Does everybody understand that? When you stop looking to compare things with what Jesus says, Instead of what man says, you begin to drift. Then you become a man pleaser instead of a God pleaser. You become a spouse pleaser instead of a God pleaser. You become an employee pleaser instead of a God pleaser. Does everybody, employer pleaser. Amen? Does everybody understand that? We never want to stop seeking truth in everything that we do. Nothing. The moment we cease or even compromise it, the enemy steps in. And that's where the Bible says, make no place for the devil. Does anybody, everybody get this? Because he said, what did he say? Because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own what? Resources. Why? Because he stopped seeking truth, the true resource of all things. For he is a liar and a father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Let me tell you something. That's one of the things the enemy wants to do. He's always trying to interfere, trying to split us so we stop seeking truth. And when we stop seeking truth, we start seeking something else. It's called self. Amen? Because see, truth will humble you humble you. 
It doesn't promote disobedience. It doesn't promote rebellion. Truth promotes freedom. And when we seek truth in everything of our life, freedom is always established. There is no compromise, no complacency. There's no drift. To be a truth seeker, we must know truth. Amen? We must know truth. We must desire more truth. We must love truth. And we must practice truth, which brings life, light, and freedom. Where there's bondage, truth has been removed, annihilated, or separated. As we maintain a true seeking, you know, as we're, we're maintaining that arena that we're always seeking truth, we are always comparing decisions with truth. We are comparing our thoughts with truth. We are comparing our emotions with truth. Amen? The word of truth is the person, Jesus Christ. He is the person of truth. He is also known as the spirit of truth. Amen? In 1 John chapter 1, true seekers. First John chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 5. You know, that's one of the areas where the enemy comes in. Where people begin to exchange. They begin to get blinded. They begin to get frustrated in the area of thoughts and emotions. This is an attack from the enemy. Does everybody get it? Listen, you and I are not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places. We, we have an invisible enemy that's constantly trying to divide you. Because a house divided cannot stand. Amen? He's tr trying to divide you. And if he gets to you, he'll try to divide you. He'll to try to divide someone else. And remember, you can't counsel a demon. Amen? In verse 5, what does it say? This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no what? Darkness at all. There's no darkness. There's no gray area, is there? Amen? If we say that we have fellowship with him who is truth, then we and walk in darkness, which is not truth, we lie. And he says, and we, then we don't practice the truth. So truth seekers must not only love the truth, seek the truth, amen, but practice the truth and everything. You put, how do you practice the truth? You use it and compare amen. in everything of decisions, everything that you and I do, there must be truth next to it. If it's not there, then there's been a disconnect. Is everybody Okay. And then you know what people do? They go to fulfill self. Remember, that's what the enemy does. A disconnect. What, let me share with you what, usually what happens. There's an open door. There's an open door. We bring things on ourselves, don't we? Because, of course, the law of sowing and reaping, but we still bring things on. How does the enemy use someone? They let them. <laughs> Amen. The enemy will use any one of us in this room if you let him. It doesn't matter how long you've been a believer. It doesn't matter how much you read the word. It doesn't matter how much you pray. Does everybody get this? It doesn't matter how much you worship. That's all it takes is one little open door. That's why the Bible says a little leaven leavens what? The whole lump. It's just that one little thing, that one thought that you touched and agree with. Oh, maybe it didn't happen today, but it's waiting for an opportune moment. Because even after Jesus was tempted, what does the Bible say? That the devil left and he came back at what? An opportune time. He's always looking for an opportunity. He wakes, 
for when you're weak. He waits when you're distracted. He waits when something occurs in your life. He waits. He waits. He tries to exchange truth. He tries to exchange the area of lust with takes God's love and exchanges, exchanges it with lust. And he calls it God's love. Is everybody okay? So we say, he says, okay, if you, if, you, if you say that you have fellowship with him, in other words, if you're connected with him, then you're going to what? Practice the truth. If you're disconnected, and why do we get disconnected? Because we allow a door to be open. Something we said, something we thought, something we agreed with, something that we disobeyed. All right, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship <clears throat> with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from what? All sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Again, what he means by the truth not being in us has been, it's been exchanged. Even though the truth is in us, we're ignoring it. We're not practicing it. We're not taking hold of it. We're not utilizing it. <clears throat> if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. You know when you look at the Bible says anything that's not of faith is sin. And sin is the presence of evil, isn't it? So there's a disconnect by open doors, which brings darkness, deception, confusion, blindness, and bondage. What do we disconnect? With the person of truth. You know, I keep hearing this constantly. It's amazing to me. I don't know what season this is or whatever, but I keep hearing my children come to, too easily get disconnected. Too easily get disconnected. Hallelujah. Disconnect with the person of truth. We are to practice the truth. By what? Comparing decisions, thoughts, emotions, desires with the truth. Until repentance comes to wash us with the blood of the Lamb, then it allows the spirit of truth and light to be restored to me and you. So that we can overcome what? Any other lies or deception. Sin is the presence of evil. What, one of the things it loves to do, if, he, I, I, if you can picture this, if, there, if he can get a quick disconnect, all right? If he can get a quick disconnect long enough to plant seeds of corruption, to plant seeds of deception, to plant viper eggs in me and you, and then we repent and we come to the truth, oh, thank you, Lord, I repent. Those seeds and eggs are still there. It's a matter to where it grows and bears fruit for the glory of the devil or those eggs hatch until those seeds are Cursed, commanded to wither and die, and broken loose from us. See, just because we repent doesn't mean we're free. How many of y'all know that people have repented out there and are not free? How many of y'all know people that know the truth and are not free? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So sin is the presence of evil. He comes to plant seeds and eggs of the vipers to hatch. He comes to water. He waters. And he keeps watering. What does he do? He constantly remind, he'll constantly remind you of something, of your past. That's how he waters. Is everybody okay? In Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2 and verse 1. <clears throat> true seekers. Everyone raise your hand and say, I'm a true seeker. I'm done 
with any worldly truth. <laughs> I'm an eternal truth. <laughs> you know, we're, we're seeing more and more, you know, the enemy loves to, loves to paint truth on the outside of something, but inside is poison. That's how he does it. That's how he deceives God's children. He makes it look so good and sound so good. It's like buying that car that's beautiful. Man, great. And it looks so good. You start it up, it sounds good, and then all of a sudden you start hearing a few clunks and you ignore it because it looks so good. Ah, <laughs> eh, we'll fix it later. And then it's blowing smoke rings out the exhaust system. Ah, <laughs> eh, no, we'll fix it later. And then you get to drive it, find out it's got no brakes. And you pull the emergency brake. Oh, we'll fix it later. Because it looks so good on the outside. And then you go to purchase it and you find out you have to get a loan because you don't have enough money for it. But that compromise comes in because of a disconnect already. And says, it's okay, I'll work extra hours. I'll find a way to pay it. Now you <laughs> And you drive that thing two weeks, and it sits in your driveway or backyard. And you're making payments on it. Then you get bad credit. You see the ripple effect. And then you lose it and the collectors come and get it and so forth. And then they're hounding you and calling you constantly. Even when they have the car. Because it looks so good. You know how many people married somebody that looked so good and found out it was a lemon? It sounded so good. It prayed so good. But it was a lemon. <laughs> Sour. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Are we at Romans yet? <laughs> Verse 1. Therefore, you are what? Inexcusable. O oh, man or woman, whoever you are, you who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. Why? Because you, ju you, you judge are doing the same stinking thing. Well, this person's this, this person's that, that person's this, this, but you're doing the same thing. <laughs> you know what that means? You bring it on yourself. You bring it on yourself. Hello? So quick to condemn. Verse 2. But we know that the judgment of God is according to what? Truth against those who practice such things. Do you not think this, O oh man or woman, you who judge those practicing such things, and do the same that you'll escape the judgment of God? In other words, you're going to bring it on yourself. Thank God it's not the wrath. It's just the judgment. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to what? Repentance. Forgive me for being an idiot. But in accordance with your hardness of your impedent heart, you are treasuring up for who? Yourself. Wrath, in the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. You bring it on yourself. Eternal life to those who by patient continue. Everyone say continue. In doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But those who are what? Self, let me share with you, when disconnect comes, self-seeking is manifested. You may not think you're disconnected. But when self-seeking is manifested, you are disconnected. 
and do not obey. The, oh, snap. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey, obey the truth. Why are they not obeying the truth? Because they're not using the truth to compare to what's going on in their life. So they're not obeying the truth. But all, uh, not obeying the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of a man who does evil, of the Jew first and also the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace. Everyone say peace. To everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. Woohoo. Why? We bring it on ourselves, don't we? Listen, I didn't catch a cold or flu or virus unless I touched something or breathed in something. Amen? So did I bring it on myself or did somebody give it to me? Hello. Now that person might have come in my room and left it, you know, but, or you might have shaken it or touched the doorknob. Amen. But we still bring it on ourselves, don't we? Somebody get this. People taking communion don't realize that when they partake of communion, if they're out of order, if they're doing stuff behind closed doors that God knows ain't right and according to what he's sustained, they bring sickness on themselves. They bring curse on themselves. And even when they repent, you still must reap what you sow. People think that repentance grants them a way of escape from reaping. Never does. Does everybody get it? Never does. Everyone must reap no matter what. But God will use that reaping to train you. Amen? He trains us. If we let him, so we can either allow that chastening to train us or we run. <sighs> and then things just get worse. <sighs> John, or James chapter 3. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've heard that many times. Hey, what happened to Carrie? I bought a lemon. How's your marriage? I married a lemon. People go out and buy things without comparing it to the truth. They go out and associate with things without comparing it to the truth. And it becomes very sour. Amen? Praise God. What did I say to go? James. All right. I like James. James chapter 3 and verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is from above, not from the earth. The wisdom from the earth promotes pride. The wisdom from above promotes humility. Because we know it's not ours. Does everybody get it? It's not ours. <laughs> Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom, but if you have bitter envy and what? Self-seeking, you are disconnected. In your hearts, do not boast and lie against the what? Truth. That means a person doesn't use that truth or their compromising their truth, so they're actually lying. Listen, when you compromise, you lie. Verse 15, it says, This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic, and what? <laughs> it's crazy, man, it's crazy. Verse 16, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. Listen, you cannot intellectually figure this out. You can't do this with common sense. This wisdom comes from above. It's God's voice. It's the voice of wisdom that directs me and you. It's the voice of truth. 
Uh, look at for where envy and self-seeking exist. There it is again. Confusion, frustration, compromise, complacency, and every evil thing are there. Grumbling, complaining. But the wisdom that is from God, which is above, is first what? Pure. Then what? Peaceable. Then what? Gentle. Come on. Willing to what? Yield or what? Submit. It's not a bucker. It's a bower. Full of what? Mercy. Good fruits. Without partiality. And without being a hypocrite. Hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Oh, yeah. Earthly, carnal, sensual, demonic, based on works, pride, and, and arrogance. It's not a, it's, it, it stops the arena of seeking truth. And when it stops the area of seeking truth, it seeks self. And remember, this influence is not human. It's demonic. Amen? So that when we see this begin to happen to us, stop! Stop! And step out of that puddle of deception. And pull the sword of truth out so that you can utilize it to compare where am I? Who told me that? Where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? Why, you're going to compare with truth. And when the answer doesn't come, you know what you do? You wait. <laughs> Remember that. Proverbs 23. But I want it now. You know why we want it now? Because we've been disconnected. And we're looking for something to feel good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Truth seekers. There wouldn't be so much garbage going on in the kingdom if there was, everybody was true seeking. In verse 22, would you read it with me, please? <clears throat> listen to your spiritual fathers. Oh, uh, listen to your father who begot you. And do not despise your mama when she is old. <laughs> what does it say, verse 23? <laughs> what does it say? Buy. Hello. That means there's a price. What's the price? Cooperation. We need to do a song in there. Need a cooperation. <laughs> Buy the truth and don't what? Sell it. Don't exchange it for self-seeking. Utilize it. Buy the truth. Don't sell it. Don't exchange it. Also wisdom. Hello. And instruction and understanding. See, when that disconnect comes and the truth is separated, so is wisdom and so is understanding. So is sight and vision and hearing. Mr. Vale comes. Hmm. Huh? It's the huh syndrome. Duh, what just happened? Did you ever see that in the cartoons? Duh, where did he go? <laughs> I don't know if that was Bug Bunny or something, you know. Duh, where did he go? No, that was Elmer Fudd, I think. Duh, where did he go? 
That's how people get when they th disconnect. They don't even know what hit them. That demon came up and slapped them in the head and they went down. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 24. What does it say? The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice and he who re begets a, a wise child will delight in him. Let your father and your mother be glad and let her who bore you rejoice. My son, give me your heart. Hello? We need to do that daily. Lord, I exchange my heart for your heart. That's daily. And let your eyes observe my ways. In other words, keep your eyes on the king. See, when truth gets, to, when there's a disconnect and truth gets put aside, there's no longer sight on the king. There's sight on what? Self. My son, give me your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. For a harlot is a deep pit, and a seductress is a narrow well. She also lies in wait as for a victim and increases the unfaithful among men. You get to remember, this is a spirit. Amen? Who, who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Those who linger long at the wine. This is known as the drink of deception. Those who go in search of mixed wine, who do not look on, do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. At the last, it bites like a what? Serpent and stings like a viper. Now look at this. Your eyes will see strange things. Please understand that when there's a flawed belief system, there's a flawed perception, you will not see correctly. You won't see correctly. Your heart will utter perverse things. In other words, your heart the character of your spirit, which is now contaminated, you're going to hear voices from everywhere. They're going to come against anything of God. Is everybody okay? Yes, you'll be like one of those who lie down in the midst of the sea or like one who lies at the top of the mass saying, they have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink of deception? The drink of deception rejects the truth. You know, there's the saying of, you play, you pay. Why? Because we bring it on ourselves. You play, you pay. Proverbs 3. Glory. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3. Jason, turn me those Kleenex, will you? Where? Oh, snap. <laughs> Never mind. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 1. Is everybody there? What's it say? My son, don't forget my law. But let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace, they will what? Add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Hello. In other words, keep it right here. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Why? Who does the promotion? God or man? God. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. You know, he says, seek me with all of your heart and you'll what? Find me. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Don't be wise in your own stinky eyes. But fear the Lord and depart from the presence of evil. 
When you depart from truth, you enter the presence of evil. Amen? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. It will be to your benefit. Amen? Mercy and truth, forsake, don't forsake it. Use it. See it to compare every decision and everything that you're doing. In Psalm 51. Uh, and continuously seeking truth and utilizing the truth in everything keeps us spiritually positioned. See, the enemy knows that his time is running out. He knows that God's getting ready to take his children out of here soon. And so he's going to try and get as many people out of position as possible. <sighs> Hallelujah. You know, the battle is not one time. It's continuous, isn't it? We don't need a storehouse of lemons, do we? <laughs> Psalm 51 and verse 5. Would you read it with me, please? Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother, what? Conceive me. Behold, you desire what? Truth in the inward parts. In other words, in all of your members. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Wisdom. It says he desires the truth in, to reign in all of our members. It is known, he's known as the spirit of truth. So you're making way for the spirit of truth. And where the, the, the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Freedom, there is no bondage. None. There's freedom. No matter what you're going through. That's why the word says count it all joy. If you can't count it all joy, then there's an open door. Look at nobody likes to feel sick. Nobody likes to feel in debt. Nobody likes to feel oppressed. Nobody likes to feel bad. But what are you going to do with it when it comes? Are you going to allow it to rain? Or are you going to take truth and compare it? Because if you don't, you'll drift further. Psalm 54, is everybody there? Oh, yes. Behold, God is my helper. Come on, speak it with me. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with those who uphold my life. I will repay my enemies for their evil and cut them off in your... Oh, man, did you see that? And cut them off in your what? Truth. So truth is going to cut you from the enemy. It's going to be used as a weapon. I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me out of all trouble and my eye has seen its desire upon my enemies. Ephesians chapter 4. Cut off my enemies with truth. As a truth seeker, we know truth, we love truth, and we practice truth. Ephesians 4.11. What does it say? And he himself gave some to be what? Apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, the anointing, that we should no longer be children, no longer what? Children, easily swayed, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine or thought, by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking what? Truth in what? In love. May what? Grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. In love. 
A disconnect brings childlike thinking. Whining, complaining, compromising, confusion, compl uh, even condemning, criticism, mudslinging. Does everybody see that? And of course, it brings self-seeking. Disconnect from the truth, the person of truth. And what it causes is fallen eyes. That's something that was spoken to me by the Spirit. And when he, when he spoke to me about fallen eyes, I saw eyes looking down. In other words, losing sight. The eyes looked down. Fallen eyes. They lost sight. Remember, when truth is not being practiced, loved, or sought, then we're not seeking Jesus. Then we're not seeking the Creator. And we begin to seek creation. Amen? Is everybody okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2. <laughs> Verse 14. <laughs> Would you read it with me, please? Remind them of these things. Charge them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. But be what? Diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more what? Ungodliness. So we need to shut that down right away. Man, your brother and sister starts grumbling and complaining. Shut up. Stick a sock in your mouth, man. Does everybody get it? Why? Because it will spread like cancer. Stick a banana. We get plenty of bananas donated to us. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Verse 17. It says their message will spread like what? Cancer, you see. Hymenius and Philetus are of this sort. Who have what? Strayed. Disconnected. Concerning the what? Truth. They've disconnected from the truth. Saying that the resurrection has already passed. Man, I know, know a lot of religious organizations that are disconnected. And they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal that the Lord knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity or deception. But in a grace house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, any of one cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master and prepared for what? Every good work. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 5. So if you come in my office and there's a banana on my desk, be careful. <laughs> Glory. I may ask you, do you like bananas? <laughs> Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5, let's speak it. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know that what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. 
Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way, which is me and you, the Holy Spirit. That's the rapture, the next event. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With what? All power. Signs and what? Lying wonders. You think he's doing it now? Yeah, he's not stopped. People are maybe still waiting. I'm wondering when he's going to start. Well, for you, it's a, you're already in it. If you're waiting for it to start, you're in it. And with all right, unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be what? Saved. For this reason, God's going to send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in what? Unrighteousness. A disconnect of the person of truth brings confusion and delusion from and, and what happens, they, get, they do not focus on the Lord. They focus more on deception and don't even realize they're being deceived. John chapter 4. You know, mom called me the other day because she, she, a few days ago she knew I was um, battling the bug and whatever. And, and she called and she said, I just wanted to call and say, how you doing and what's going on? So how you doing? I love you and so forth. I said, well, I'm just blessed and highly peachy. I felt like crap. But I wasn't going to allow that to affect me. Does everybody understand that? I felt like just burying myself and staying in bed and not associating with anyone, but I couldn't allow what I felt to dictate what the truth says. So I had to take the truth because I love truth. And truth means so much because truth is a person. So I looked to the person of truth and said, help. And you know what he said? Speak what I taught you. And I did. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. He in me as greater than he is in the world. Cut me loose in Jesus' name. And I went about the day. I didn't go around telling everybody, I am so happy, I feel like garbage. <laughs> I just love to feel miserable. See, we saw our way out of the circumstance. Does everybody get it? We saw our way out. Why? Because you have the power and authority to change the atmosphere around you. See, remember, the powers of darkness come and they alter the atmosphere. And then you feel what they feel because they're bringing it. If you're not feeling peace, joy, and righteousness and Holy Spirit, you're feeling someone else. Now, you've got to take dominion and authority and change that atmosphere. Amen? That's why I leave the music on for my dog and my bird. I, wherever I go, I keep keeping the music on. Well, I want the music to praise. I want to keep the demons out of my home so I can enter a place of peace. So keep the music on, honey. <laughs> Hallelujah. John 4. Are we all there yet? <laughs> Anybody hot? No. Well, you need to get hot. <laughs> Praise God. Hon, you can do anything you want with that little thermometer or whatever that thing is. Thermostat. Later. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not cold. Anybody cold in here? It's freezing. Praise God. Hallelujah. John chapter 4. 
in verse 13. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And a woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to drink. And Jesus said, Go, call your husband and come here. All set up. <laughs> and the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said, I know. You have well said, I have no husband. For you've had five husbands, and the one you're shacking up with right now ain't your husband either. And he said, at least you spoke the truth. <laughs> and a woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. In other words, he read her dirty laundry. <laughs> Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, woman, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. Disconnect. Does everybody get it? Disconnect. Worshiping something that you're not connected with. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jew. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. Connect. 2 Corinthians 4. Glory. Ah. <sighs> Hallelujah. Jesus convicts people into true seekers. Does everybody understand that? Jesus convicts people to become truth seekers. Wasn't he doing it with that woman? My, he exposed her, didn't he? He was bringing conviction so that she'd become a truth seeker. So Jesus converts people to be true seekers. The enemy converts people to be self-seekers. And then they come in with fear, anxiety, stress, and the what-if syndrome, and not trust. What if, what if, what if, what if? Every time you get that, that ain't from God. 2 Corinthians 4, is everybody there? In verse 16. Therefore we what? We don't lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Praise God. For our light affliction, everyone say light affliction, which is but a moment, hallelujah, is working for us more exceeding an eternal weight of glory, believe it or not. No, believe it, please. Well, we do not look at the things which are what? Seen. Do you know that when you start looking at the things that are seen, you get disconnected? Does everybody get that? When you begin to rely on the things that you see, you get disconnected. What are you disconnecting? From truth. Why? Because now you're going to allow the things that you see to dictate instead of what truth dictates. Does everybody grab hold of this? Once we allow anything else to dictate, we lose the dictation of truth and it causes disconnect. That's why it's very, you must be very careful when you go for counsel in the world. In fact, you need to be careful some of the places you go for counsel for. Especially if they're not spirit-filled, the only thing that they know is the counsel of carnality. That's all they know. 
Believe me, a counselor of carnality will not tell you you're being influenced by a spirit. People go to marriage counseling. You know what the problem is? The lack of marriage between God and themselves. That's the problem. Majority of the time. Amen? Because one of them is disconnected. If they're both disconnected, the marriage works. When one disconnects, the marriage becomes divided. And then one stops seeking truth, one will continue to seek truth. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things that are not seen. Why? We are exposing the invisible enemies. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So that means it's affecting your eternal life, isn't it? We're to expose the invisible enemies as we maintain to be true seekers. It keeps us in position too, doesn't it? Does everybody see how this all connects all the time? It's every day, all the time. Romans 8, and we'll close here. Again, there's a difference between physical works and spiritual works, isn't there? In Romans 8, 18, would you read it with me? Everybody's going to confess this today. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons and daughters of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Who is that? Me and you. For we know that the whole Creation groans and labors with birth pains together till now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. That's endurance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or understood. Because you're praying in tongues. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good to those that love God. That means that they love truth and they're seek truthers. Amen? Does everybody get that? If you maintain to be a true seeker, things are going to work to the good no matter what you're going through. No matter what it feels like, no matter what it looks like, it's going to work to the good. We know that all things work to the good for, to those who love God because you love truth, you practice truth, you seek truth. To those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Everyone say, I'm called. Oh. Whom he called, these he also justified. Say, I'm justified. Yes. And those whom he also justified, he also glorified. We are glorified for his glory and purpose. Amen? What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Praise be to God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. You are so good to us. 
Help us to maintain to be truth seekers. Love the person of truth. His name, his presence, and his will. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed and seek truth.